Divine Signs, Neville Goddard Lecture, May 1st, 1968. Get ready for a surprising revelation that will challenge your beliefs and expand your understanding of the world. In today's video, we will explore an intriguing perspective on the story of Jesus and the sacred scriptures. Those brought up in the Christian faith have learned that the scriptures are mere historical records. However, I am here to share something beyond that conventional view. The story of Jesus, from his conception by the Holy Spirit to his ascension to heaven, is much more than a simple secular account. As we delve into the visions of the Old and New Testaments, we will discover that these narratives are more than mere written words. They are windows into an eternal reality, a profound calling, and a transcendental message that goes beyond time and space. But here's the intriguing secret. What seems to be just one person on paper is, in fact, a personified state of consciousness, an internal transformation that surpasses human understanding and invites us to explore the deepest mysteries of existence. So, get ready to open your mind to possibilities, be prepared to question and reevaluate your perspectives because what is to come may change the way you see yourself. I recommend watching until the end for a deeper understanding. Don't forget to leave your like, it helps deliver this knowledge to more people. Those brought up in the Christian faith are taught to believe that the scripture is a secular history. However, I know that the story of Jesus, from his conception by the Holy Spirit to his ascension to heaven, is a divine sign given by God to those who receive it. The visions of the Old and New Testaments remain unchanged eternal realities forever. One day, you will find that what appears to be a person on paper is a personified state of consciousness. When Paul recognized this truth, he declared, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. After the revelation, Paul realized that Jesus Christ was the creative power and wisdom of God, not an individual as previously taught. But why did God become man? So that man may become God. Every attribute of God, be it called faith, Abraham, or the power and wisdom of God, Jesus Christ, was personified. Even though Paul was addressing the Corinthians, he was speaking about the characters of scriptures when he said, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, unable to consider Abraham as a person any longer. Paul recounts the story. It is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. By your physical birth, you are the one born of the slave woman. But Paul explains the allegory of the two sons, telling us that Hagar, a servant of Sarah, was given to Abraham, resulting in the birth of Ishmael. This symbolizes the worldly struggle we face in earning a living, paying rent, and taxes, always trying to stay above the flood of illusion. However, after the vision, Paul realized there is another birth occurring within, called Isaac. This second son comes from Sarah, born according to the promise. The allegory continues, highlighting the contrast between the two births and their symbolic meanings. The first son, Ishmael, represents worldly struggles and conflicts. The second son, Isaac, born according to the promise, signifies a spiritual birth, transcending the limitations of the material world. So, as we delve into these profound insights, let us question and reevaluate our perspectives. The story of Jesus and the scriptures is not a mere historical account, but a divine sign pointing to internal transformations, eternal realities, and a calling that goes beyond the conventional understanding. Watch until the end for a deeper understanding, and don't forget to leave your like to share this knowledge with more people. 
All of this is symbolism because when your spiritual birth occurs, a child wrapped in swaddling clothes will appear to symbolize your birth, two distinct births of two distinct beings, one from the womb of the woman Hagar and the other from the skull of the generic man called Sarah. Having seen the vision and understood its message, Paul no longer thought of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, or any character from the scriptures, including Jesus Christ, as human. Although he previously viewed them in that way and saw their story as secular history, he no longer considered them as such. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul makes this statement, When you read the Old Testament, you will perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to men in other generations, but is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Before this revelation to Paul, the mystery of Christ coming from within was unknown. In the same letters to the Ephesians, Paul speaks of himself and those with whom he shared the vision, stating, At the fullness of time, for Paul, Christ, the power and wisdom of God, is a plan of redemption crucified upon humanity and will be resurrected from the dead. I tell you now, he revealed to me the sacred secret of his will according to his purpose that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time. When that time is fulfilled, the one buried within you will erupt and God's purpose will be revealed. The revelation of God's purpose gives meaning to everything. You may have a million dollars and die tomorrow. Those who inherit your property will talk about you superficially, but within three generations, they will forget. This is the world. However, there is a plan buried within you that reveals God's purpose and gives meaning to life. When this plan is revealed in you, you will know why you do what you do and dream what you dream. You will understand why you have certain visions, realizing that everything contains within itself a symbolic meaning. Let me show you in a very simple way tonight. You may dream of having an intimate relationship with another person. Upon waking, ask yourself what that person represents to you, and a marvelous answer will come from the depths of your soul. You will discover that, on some level, they represent a glorious state. For example, I know a brilliant man who graduated from Harvard at 19 and remained there for many years to teach advanced mathematics. As an American of many generations, he once told me we should only have people who speak English in the world, and he meant it. He was a very positive and bright person. If you dream of seeing this man in a relationship, Upon waking, you'll realize that he represents something positive, strong, and intellectual. Therefore, observe whether someone knows about events or not shortly after, what is impregnated will be inspired to do something creative. God is a creator who continuously creates, and you witness God's creative act on that level. You might think it's sorted. But that's because you don't understand God's symbolism. God speaks to everyone in the language of symbolism. What the world may condemn as a horrible act is a glorious act of God. God, being multiform, plays all roles, donning the attire of another. You may see an act that seems terrible based on your concept of that individual. However, if it is a lovely act, a glorious child like a poem, painting, or a design for a new house will appear. Outside of this union, that is all that experience means. However, man is so rooted in the flesh that it gives him a concept of Caesar that blinds him to God's symbolism. Whether or not you believe me, the story of Jesus from his conception by the Holy Spirit to his ascension into heaven is simply a sign given by God to those who receive it. I fulfill the scriptures. Some will accept my message, and some will not. If you believe in me, the word, and have seen me in vision in the creative act, 
It is because I am fertilizing the gospel story within you. I am the father of that which is being fertilized. Now, I refer to 1 Corinthians 4, where Paul speaks, saying, You have countless guides in Christ, but not many fathers. I became your father in Christ. This is a mystery. Countless people will talk about Christ based on theory and speculation, but not from experience. The King James Version calls these men instructors. Paul is saying that even though there are many instructors, after their experiences are accepted, he begets. Paul shared his vision, saying, When it pleased God to reveal his Son in me, I did not confer with flesh and blood, to whom could anyone turn after experiencing the vision of the Son of God calling you Father? How could anyone say anything about a vision you had? The Son of God revealed himself in me, and in telling it, I attract those who believed in me. Although they may not understand, they modify their preconceived concepts of the Christian faith to fit what I have experienced. The union will take place, and this concept will develop within them. God, being multiform, uses Neville or anyone who has revealed the pattern within, and using that mask, he unites with someone who has accepted the story of salvation. Having fertilized the pattern, it develops within him. In 1929, I had union with the resurrected Lord, and 30 years later, in 1959, born high. If the role you are predestined to play in the body of God requires a shorter interval, your birth may happen sooner. But my part has been a complete unfolding of the scriptures, and it took 30 years. We are told that when Jesus began his ministry, he was about 30 years old. This does not mean 30 years after physical birth, but 30 years after spiritual union. When your spiritual birth will occur, only the Father knows. But we are told in the book of Habakkuk, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It hastens toward the goal, and it will not fail. Though it delays, wait for it, for it will certainly come, it will not delay. Paul tells us there are eight levels in the body of God, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, and so on. If you are destined to play something different from an apostle, perhaps the latent time between union and the birth of that specific part is not the same. There is no dream or vision without meaning because God speaks to man through the dream and reveals himself in a vision. What you experience in the vision is right for that particular level of your being. But when reduced to this level, the thought would be totally wrong. Man, having eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, decides what is right and what is wrong, thus falling into the swamp of confusion. But when he turns around, he discovers that nothing is right or wrong. At one level, it is right, and at another, it is wrong. Therefore, learn to accept all levels, and in doing so, you will like the tree of life to discover that all levels, when seen from there, are right when you know how to interpret them. He revealed to me the mystery of his sacred will according to his purpose, which he established as a plan in Christ for the fulfillment of the times. Now, I know that Christ is not a person, and I do not consider any biblical character from a human point of view, but rather a personified state of consciousness. Once, I considered Christ from a human point of view, but now I see him as the creative power of imagination and the wisdom of imagination with a plan buried in that power. Now I know that I am the cross that God's power carries when his plan of salvation unfolds in me. He awakened and resurrected in me, and the whole story of Jesus Christ unfolded and revealed itself as God the Father. I have shared my experiences. If the world does not believe me, it truly does not matter, as I will find my remnant, 
my 10% who believed in my story despite what they believed previously. In this audience, some who regularly attend continue to bring their barriers with them and do not accept my story. Others, carrying their preconceived misconceptions about the scriptures, leave and never return. A friend brought a lovely lady to the last lecture. When she said she would consider my theories, I told her that these are not theories, I speak from personal experience. She said, but I am an ordained minister, and I replied, that means nothing to me. Have you had the vision of Christ? The one who ordained you had the vision of Christ. If it's a blind person leading another blind person, you cannot consider my theories. Only what I have experienced. If it does not fit into your prefabricated misconception of the scriptures, that's okay. But I am sharing my visions, my experiences are all revelations, not theories. She was very kind and left, saying that this was her first lecture. You don't come once and hear something so radically different from what you were trained to believe and expect to swallow at hook, line, and sinker. I would ask my friend to lend her my book Resurrection and to read the chapter about Resurrection, it's all documented. I have referenced the Old Testament, and like Paul, I ask her to keep in mind my interpretation of the Old Testament when reading my experiences. If she does, she will find the light coming from what she did not understand before as the pattern awakened in me. The New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old, not the other way around. The pattern the mystery of his will remains sealed in the Old Testament until the fulfillment of the times when the seal is broken and the individual man resurrects, fulfilling the scriptures. If you test your creative power at this level, the statement, all that you desire, believe that you have received it and you will receive it, will no longer be a grand theory spoken by the mouth but will be known through experience. Believe that you are the man or woman you desire to be. Capture the feeling that you have already arrived. Look at your world from that assumption, knowing your truth, and believe that your assumption has its appointed time to flourish. Persist in your belief, no power on earth can prevent it from becoming a reality. This is Christianity, there is no limit to your creative power. The most terrible problem will be solved if you only conceive a solution in your mind. Anyone can do this. You don't need to be an Einstein to imagine that a problem has been resolved. Do not limit your creative power by determining the forms and means for it to happen because imagination has at its disposal ways that are beyond discovery. Do not worry about how, when, or where, only the end matters. If you are in debt, what is the solution? Winning the lottery or a rich uncle passing away and leaving his fortune to you? No, the end is that you are debt free. How would you feel if all your bills were paid? Assume that feeling and let imagination harden that feeling into a fact. Every problem has a solution. Imagine the solution and assume it is true. What would you see and do if it were true? How would you feel? Persist in that feeling, and in a way no one knows, the solution will come. Nothing is impossible for God, and God is crucified in you as your own wonderful human imagination. There has never been another God, and there will never be another, and all things are possible to him. If you can imagine the end, knowing that all things are possible to imagination and remain faithful to that assumption as if it were true imagination will solidify into fact remember the creative power does not operate by itself knowing what to do is not enough you the operative power of imagination must be willing to assume that things are as you want them to be before they happen now, let's return to the divine signs. 
The Bible begins with the story of Abraham, which is an allegory, a story told as if it were true, allowing the reader to discover its fictional nature and learn its lesson. If the story of Abraham, Sarah, and their descendants Isaac, as well as the story of Abraham, Hagar, and their descendants Ishmael, are allegories, and Abraham is the father of us all, where is the reality of the story? The New Testament begins like this. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. If Abraham, the source of all life, is an allegory, then everything is an allegory, including Jesus Christ, as he is the culmination of the entire genealogy that begins in the first chapter of Matthew. Research, and you will discover that the scriptures are a marvelous plan of salvation buried in Christ, the creative power and wisdom of God crucified in man as his own wonderful human imagination. Knowing that the plan is contained within you, belief will awaken it. You may completely ignore when the plan was fertilized, but it must be fertilized by the one who has awakened from the dream of life because the plan to be born is spirit. The one who has not yet awakened can be used to create a beautiful poem, a play, or a wonderful story at this level, but God's plan of salvation can only be fertilized by the one who has already risen from the dead. God, being multiform, will assume that mass to play that role. Now, let us enter into silence. <laughs> 